All right, everyone. We are here to make blue emitting cadmium zinc sulfide quantum dots using the reagents you see here. We are going to inject a sulfur dodeclamine mixture into a solution of cadmium zinc oleate in an octadecene solvent at 310 degrees. Here's our oleic acid. We recrystallize this, keep it in the fridge. That's why you can see some crystals there. It needs to be warmed up before we open it, though. Whenever you keep a any chemical under fridge or, or in a freezer, it needs to warm up before you open it. Otherwise, water will get into it. And here we're weighing out some cad acetate. We recrystallize this ourselves. Uh, sometimes we use cad acetate dihydrate. We do not use the normal method that you'll read about in the literature of using metal oxides and oleic acid. Uh, in that procedure, you digest the oxide with oleic acid to form the metal oleate. We tend not to do that because we find that the process is very difficult to control. You get a lot of byproducts. Uh, there can be some kind of weird polymer forming, and there's some literature uh, precedent for that. So what we do is we use acetates, and we displace the acetic acid with oleic acid at moderate temperatures. It doesn't work perfectly, so we have to ramp the temperature up to about 200 degrees for uh, about half an hour, cool it back down, and degas it. Regardless, we've weighed out our chemicals and now we're loading up the three neck and if you're like me There's always a little bit of powder left over on the tray and I never quite know what to do about that Whether I should try to account for that by weighing out a little bit more, but I guess that's why uh, Synthetic chemists get PhDs, right? So now we're weighing out the solvent and you notice I'm not using a graduated cylinder or syringe and that's because a balance, this is an old balance uh, that can take uh, a little uh, at the higher end of the weight scale. I like to weigh solvents out because it's actually way more accurate as long as you know the density. Um, the, a balance has many more significant figures than a, than a graduated cylinder is what it comes down to. Okay, the oleic acid has warmed up and now it's a liquid. We usually we do this one last. Oleic acid, we recrystallize it ourselves. If you buy recrystallized oleic acid, it's very expensive. So we try to be very, very careful with this. So I'm gonna weigh out exactly one gram. We have a video on how to recrystallize oleic acid. Um, it's, it's very expensive otherwise. So we make it ourselves and that's nice, but it's kind of painful to, to, to make it yourself. So again, we're very careful with the oleic acid. Now that we're done, uh, we have a little septa. That's where we're going to inject the, the sulfur dodeclamine solution. And if you're like me, I almost forget every time to add the stir bar. So I better remember that. And here's what the setup looks like with the condenser and the temperature probe adapter. So now we're going to add the condenser. I always add the grease just near the very top. In that way, when I put the condenser on, uh, there's minimal chance the grease will get in the solvent. I, I don't think it really matters if it does or not. You can be a little bit more liberal with the hose adapter. Now I like to use very heavy duty clamps because if you recall we're going to inject this at 310 degrees. That's pretty scary. If this gets accidentally knocked over and breaks open, God forbid, probably going to have a fire on our hands, so I like to strap this in as pretty hard as I can. Here's our temperature adapter, and that uh, for the temperature probe you use a little little adapter called a bushing, and the bushing uh, attaches to the to the adapter with a little o-ring. Uh, you should use Viton. Viton is chemically resistant. And if you just tie it in finger tight, that should be vacuum sealable. Here's the setup, and we have it connected to our Schlink line with vacuum tubing. We're about to hit vacuum, and you can see a burst as air comes out, probably a little acetic acid as well. And that settles down pretty quickly. You know, there, there's some formulations you have to be pretty careful of. As soon as you hit vacuum, they'll just they'll bump all the way to the all the way to the Schlink line, makes a mess. Here we're heating up somewhere 80, 120. And at, at uh, around 80 degrees, you can see that the acetic acid is coming off, and you see a burst of uh, bumping inside of the, the solvent. 
Now, it never, we never fully convert the zinc or cadmium acetate to, to the oleate at um, these temperatures. So what we have to do is we have to heat it up to 220, usually 220, maybe 250 for about half an hour, cool it back down and do the vacuum again. While that's happening, we're gonna prepare the, the sulfur solution. That's 25 mg of sulfur. Don't use more because the dots will be ruined. They'll have a bunch of surface trap emission, which you can't fix. If you use too little uh, sulfur, what you'll do is you'll actually make slightly bigger dots. So the formulation you're seeing today makes 450 emitters. You can make them uh, a little bit more blue-green if you use less sulfur. So we've got that mixed in with one gram, do one gram dodecalamine. We're going to add a septa. has a stir bar in there. There you go. Now what we're gonna do is attach that to our Schlink line. And what I've done is I've attached a syringe to the, to the hose. Yeah, that clamp is quite necessary. And I'm using a thin 21 gauge needle. Be careful when you take the cap off. And that just goes through the septa. It's pretty self-explanatory. Again, make sure the stir bar's in there. And as usual, I like to clamp things pretty tightly. So we just start to stir it and then put it under vacuum. And I'm I'm not gonna, I, mean, I know I could be a little bit more careful. I just use a heat gun to melt the dodecalamine. The, the solution will degas pretty quickly. You can find publications on the chemistry of uh, alkylamines and sulfur. You should be very careful when handling this. Alkylamines, they are readily absorbed through your skin and it's still a base. If you, especially if you have some allergies, this could do a lot of damage to your skin. So be very careful when handling uh, alkylamines. As we heat it up and stir, the sulfur dissolves and you can see it get darker and darker. And as we pull vacuum, you, you can just tell visually when it's done to gassing. Now this next part's this is actually pretty difficult. I hope I'm making it look easy, but what I'm trying to do is load a three mil syringe with a larger gauge needle. Uh, I'm trying to do that under air-free conditions. It's not really that important to do it this way. It's just that I, I've got a lot of practice I can, so I like to try to keep the everything away from oxygen as much as possible. We, we find it, it's not terribly that important or crucial to do it this way. And as soon as I take it out, I put a cap on it because the solution still, uh, the, the uh, zinc and cadmium octadecene has to get up to 310. So we're heating that up, and that's, of course, under nitrogen. Don't forget to uh, put it under nitrogen during the heat up. Now, before I inject, I drop the stir plate so that the stir plate, uh, raise it back up again so that the uh, stir plate can connect with the round bottom so that there's a good connection to the, to the stir bar. Here we go. Again, it's at 310. I inject. You can see that the quantum dots form pretty quickly. Now this formulation requires an additional half an hour of annealing at 300 degrees. So I'm going to put the, uh, the heating mantle back on, wrap it in glass wool, and again you have to wait half an hour. Now I'm a little impatient. I can't wait to see how emissive they are. Uh, th th these materials, and this is while it's still hot at 300, you're not seeing a lot of emission, so your eyes are telling you the truth. It's not very bright. After half an hour, it's done annealing, so I drop the heating mantle, turn it off, raise the uh, stir plate, turn up the stir very fast so that it cools quickly, and now I still sneak a peek with the uh, UV light to see how the emission looks. And you can tell, it, it's still hot, but you can tell that it's obviously quite a bit brighter. It doesn't look great at all, but as it cools, voila, yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. As it cools and cools, that blue light is really starting to jump out at, it, at you. When it's back to room temperature, as you can see here, it's got a nice cad sulfide yellow color. Turn out the lights, hold up the black light, and yes, now it's pretty decently bright. Now, these are pretty good cores. This is the only method I am aware of to make CAD sulfide. Again, I use a little zinc. It's the only uh, method I know to make CAD sulfide without deep trap. It's not perfect. You can see that the sample's a little purple. Uh, to make it nice and bright for bioimaging, what we like to do is then do a zinc sulfide shelling, which we'll show next. All right, I hope you like this tutorial, and I hope you make a lot of good quantum dots.